OpenArt just added a new model called Flux Realism. I wasn't planning on making this video today, but when I heard OpenArt, Flux, and Realism, three of my favorite things in image generation, all in the same place, well, priorities changed and here we are. By the way, OpenArt is sponsoring this video, but they have no idea what I'm gonna say because I don't know what I'm gonna say. So let's go see what I got to say. I'm logged in at openart.ai. I'll click on create image. On the left side, under model, we'll click on that and we'll select this one right in the top middle flux realism. Now we need to give it a prompt. Fortunately, I have a handful of those ready to go. I'm not gonna do anything with image guidance for the advanced settings. I'm not gonna modify those either. I think it is set on 28 right now, which is usually the number of steps that I use for flux dev. It says the default is 25 steps. So I'm not sure if I changed that or if there's just a mismatch between the label and what it actually defaults to. Under output size, I will go ahead and change the aspect ratio to landscape. And I think that's all we're gonna do. I'll leave it at two images. Now these cost five credits per image generation. So doing two images, that's gonna be 10 credits. We will hit create. And we should end up with, uh, what does it say? A diverse group of college students studying together in a cozy dimly lit coffee shop, laptops open and textbooks spread across the table. Uh, okay, I'll buy that as a coffee shop. I see laptops, I see students and I see notebooks or whatever. Perhaps best of all, we don't have have the plasticky skin on the faces of the people in this image. Now the hands on the people in the foreground here, those are questionable, but it's blurry enough that it doesn't jump out right away and certainly easily fixable if you love this image all but the hand. Slightly different take here. It doesn't seem like these folks are in a group study, but sort of independently just in a corral there doing their thing. I think it looks really realistic. I even see a few little blemishes and things that are imperfect, which is absolutely what I want in realistic images. Let's try a tired retail worker who's taking a break in the stock room and scrolling on their phone. We asked for fluorescent lighting and we got it. I think I even said, yeah, sitting on a stack of boxes. So the prompt adherence is really good. The left hand looks okay. The right hand, I think there's some kind of food in there. Maybe we're having a snack or maybe that's a napkin. I'm not sure. The next one, okay, that is definitely some food and those hands certainly need some work. But if we took care of the hands, the rest of the image really nails the realism and it adhered to our prompt very well. Now let's do a candid, hyper-realistic portrait of an average looking 30 year old woman, no makeup, t-shirt, outdoor, public setting. And if you can't tell what I'm going for here is just real. Like I don't want a supermodel. I don't want the picture that came with the picture frame. I just want a real person in a real environment. We've got some lines. We've got a couple of blemishes, imperfectly perfect, just what I wanted. This looks like it came off somebody's camera roll and then they blurred the background. All right, let's try something totally weird. We're gonna use img underscore 1598.jpg street portrait. Because sometimes when you put in something that looks like a file name that your phone camera or an old digital camera might have saved an image as, you get some pretty interesting results. For all these that we've been generating, I haven't changed anything except for the prompt. All these settings I've left exactly where we started with them. Let's take a look at this little girl. Oh, isn't she adorable? Next up, we have this guy who looks very real. I'm not sure about the car over here parked on the sidewalk or the fact that this car seems to be maybe in the middle of the road. He's definitely gonna get a ticket for being more than 12 inches from the curb and probably for facing the wrong way, but that's neither here nor there. Those are fairly minor issues compared to the fact that we got a guy here that looks really real. Looks like somebody you might've taken a snapshot of. Even the background scenery, this all looks pretty legit. Before I turned on the camera, I created a couple of images with with flux realism in open art. I started off with this lady who's supposed to be having uh, an argument with the wind, basically. It's uh, blowing her hair and her skirt and everything. And the prompt, which of course AI wrote, not me, it said the passersby were, you know, chuckling sympathetically. And it really captured that in this image. The only thing that I can find that's unrealistic about this image is that they're kind of, everybody's walking down the middle of the street instead of the sidewalk. But who knows, maybe the street's closed. Next up, I've got this prompt that's it's supposed to be a teenage boy that's a, a prankster uh, about to reveal something. He's got his hands up, his classmates looking on in anticipation, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure that I buy him as a teenager, but I have found problems in all the image generators getting ages right when it comes to like a teenager or a high schooler. It seems to think they all, or maybe I'm just old and that's what teenagers look like now. I don't know. 
Anyway, I think it's a fantastic image. The depth of field is just crazy good. The only issue that I can find is that his shirt on his left sleeve, uh, it's missing part of the sleeve. That'd be an easy fix with in painting or, you know, crop the image if you really don't want to fool with it. This one came out wild. It looks like it's off of somebody's camera roll from way back when. You be the judge. I think that looks pretty daggone real. Again, y'all, I don't want supermodels. I don't want the people that came with the picture frame. Usually when I'm generating images, I want things that look like real life. I've used this prompt or something very similar to it with multiple models. And this is my favorite one so far of Mimo in the front yard, in her lawn chair, in the trailer park. And don't mess with that dog either. Not while she's sitting on Mimo's lap. All right, the next one is a group of factory workers supposedly having lunch, uh, homemade meals and stories, which, okay, I've been in a lot of blue collar break rooms and this is not at all what the lunch spread looks like. I mean, we'll give the prompt credit that it put homemade food out there. They're sharing it. They're telling stories. That's all accurate. The spread just looks a little too gourmet to me. Now, of course, I gave it a very short prompt. So if I wanted to get the typical break room lunch meals of fast food and things in plastic containers that came out of the microwave and are somewhat ident unidentifiable, that's something I could have explained in the prompt. And this is one of the things about prompts that at least for me, you don't even think about it until you see what your first prompt generates. Now for this one, I did not skimp on the prompt details at all. This is a really long prompt. And boy, do we have some realism going here. This is not the image that's gonna come with your picture frame. And even though this is all AI generated and I know none of this really exists, I can't help but wonder what that cop is thinking. This one will end up in my fun fails collection. The prompt is detailed, but it wasn't dialed in. What's supposed to be happening in this particular prompt is she's supposed to be yelling at the police officer who's arriving. What I got was her yelling at somewhere, someplace else, completely ignoring the arriving police officer. She ain't worried about him, and for a couple of reasons. For one thing, the light bar's all red, so he might be security or something, but not somebody that's gonna take her to jail. Secondly, this fella has managed to get himself hemmed up inside the window of the door of the car. Here's where I think I got the prompt dialed in pretty good that's showing the scene that I was looking for. It's basically an encounter between a woman on the front porch and a cop that arrives to help or investigate or whatever he's there doing. And after creating this with the Flux Realism model in OpenArt, I wanted to try a few other models so that we had some comparison. So I moved on to Flux Dev and I think it did a good job, but it's got that shiny plasticky skin, which can definitely be a thing with Flux. Exact same prompt, just different model, Flux Schnell instead of Realism. This is what I got with OpenArt SDXL. Now, OpenArt's SDXL model is not bad at all. It's a good general purpose model, but as such, it's not dialed in for photography or realism. Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large Turbo gave me this image. And very literally, it did what I asked, but it feels like these folks, at least the woman, was copied and pasted into here. Or maybe she was just beamed here from another planet. I, there's something weird about it. Absolute Reality version 1.6. I like to use that for realistic images sometimes. In this case, it didn't get anywhere close to the prompt. This is not so much a, a woman in front of a trailer having a conversation with a police officer as it is, I don't know, there's been some kind of a natural disaster and these two look more like they're trying to get their story straight. And lastly, Epic Realism, which is another model on open art that I like to use for realistic images sometimes. Again, we don't have the police officer, although I guess her and her misspelled police shirt, maybe that's it. I have no idea what some of these things are in the ground and whatever you do, don't look at this woman's belly button. And just to bring you back to normal, this is what the Flux Realism model generated for that same prompt. For each of these images that I created with Flux Realism and then with the different models for comparison, I generated two images with each model, with each prompt, and then I just picked the best out of two so that we weren't here all day. But of course, the ones we did together, you got to see both of the generations. As a fan of realistic images, I've been really happy with Flux. The Flux Realism model in open art seems to be doing a good job of not only knocking off that shiny plasticky skin, but also at delivering more normal looking people and scenes than perfection, which I'm all about. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.